Today, I'm gonna to go over the Kofuzi AMA part two, answering the rest of your questions. Fifteen point eight four miles, eight minutes, forty-five seconds per mile, one hundred forty-five beats per minute. Taking three laps around my in-laws' house. There's a nice five-mile loop that I just absolutely love taking. And today was just an absolute great day to be out there going for my run. Uh, today, what I want to do though is go over the rest of the questions that I didn't get to last time. Last time, I didn't have a full battery on my camera and I started answering all the questions and the camera battery died and I didn't bring any of my extra batteries with me. So today I got a full battery now. Hopefully I should be able to get to the rest of your questions. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we picked off at what's the most bizarre or funny thing that's happened to you on one of your runs. I think one of the, like the funnier things is, I mean, I just have a lot of poop stories or poop kind of uh, incidents. Uh, nothing that dramatic, it just happens a lot. It comes. <laughs> It comes up frequently, I'm not sure why. One of the more bizarre things is when I was running around here on along the Heritage Trail, uh, my way was completely blocked by uh, a large group of cows that had young babies, and those uh, cow mamas were very large and very protective. I was on a run, I was running hard, and I definitely had to stop for a while and let the mamas kind of do their thing. I kind of had to not prod them along, but as I got closer, the moms would like grunt at me and then have their babies kind of move back. And so I would kind of wait, move closer. I didn't want them to charge at me. So I'd like kind of move closer to them a little bit by a little bit until eventually they cleared the path and then I could run by. Along that path, I usually uh, see a lot of like chipmunks, rabbits, deer, sometimes some bald eagles and some hawks. So a lot of wildlife. So wildlife isn't that bizarre, but like having my way completely blocked by cows was definitely an unusual event. Other than that, uh, the time that me and my buddy ran as stormtroopers, we ran a half marathon that way. We ran the F3 winter half marathon that way. But the funnier part was like the week before we wanted to test out our costumes to see if it would actually work. And we just ran along the 606 and it was just two random dudes running in stormtroopers along the 606 like on a Saturday, one day in the winter. That was pretty fun. Um, when and why did you start out running and what was your first marathon time? I mean, I started out running in, in middle school, but I picked up running again, at least distance running. Um, although I was like a distance runner in, in, for like the high school definition of it, I ran the half mile and the mile and I ran cross country. I picked up endurance distance running like the marathon when I was 30. My dad was 60 and he decided he was gonna run one. So I decided I would run one too. Um, and the time for that one was like 4.42 or something like that. Yeah, my dad beat me also by like 20 minutes. Um, all right, what do you, you remember about cross country in high school? I remember it, uh, two things. One, our longest runs were like six miles. And then um, I also remember that cross country runners are just a weird bunch of guys. I think that's still true. Um, what's your 2019 race shoe of the year, gear of the year? Uh, 2019 shoe of the year is Vaporfly Next. Gear of the year is probably GoPro Hero 8. Although that's not really running gear for most people. Uh, the other running gear that I would say that I really enjoy um, would be, I'm not sure. What else have I been really enjoying? Um, I've been enjoying my Kraft Sub-Z running pants. They are super warm. They are super comfortable. I just love running in them. Uh, I've been running them like every day while I've been back here. How many pairs of running shoes do you now currently own? 
I think right now I'm very heavy on shoes. I need to donate a whole bunch. I've been holding on to a whole bunch because I've put the Adidas lineup video together and the Hoka lineup video together. So I've been holding on to a whole bunch of shoes. So I think I've got maybe like 14 or 15 pairs in the closet right now. The closet can hold like nine. So I'm bursting at the seams. How do you work, fit in running all the time and edit YouTube videos? It's a time Ponzi scheme. Um, I'm borrowing time from one area to make room for the other. Uh, at some point, all the spinning plates are gonna come crashing down. I'm getting pretty close to that point right now. So I'm gonna, for 2020, I'll announce some changes later. I'm gonna take a little bit of a step back just cause it's getting a little bit intense. Maybe because of the training is getting much harder um, and more time consuming. So like I I'm running on that limit of how much time I have. Um, do you find your heart rate can come back down to some two after peaking after four to five within run? I think it means like, can I bring my heart rate back down to zone two after I've been at zone four or five during a run? Cause some of my intervals that I've been doing are like uh, one mile on and off at marathon pace and then one mile at like marathon pace or low heart rate pace. Um, I, I can, usually what I do is right after the intervals over, I will walk for about like 10, 15 seconds. And then once my heart rate gets down to one like 50 or so, then I'll start slow jogging. And then once it gets down to like my zone two, then uh, I'll get back to like a more regular pace. The more I do it, the more I find my heart rate will quickly come back down. So that's been a plus. Um, could you please tell how you manage uh, work life uh, and fit in running some well? Some tips would be very appreciated. Uh, it's, it's similar to the question uh, just before it. Um, a lot of it is though time management uh, and figuring out what you really want to spend your time on. I don't really watch a lot of TV I, or movies or sports. I watch some like marathoning now and, and follow sports on like YouTube. But like other than that, I don't, I don't think I watched like a single football game this year. Uh, what do I do for a living? I'm a consultant. I'm a, a litigation consultant. I help attorneys that are going to trial with the technological and visual aspects of that trial. So my job is to make real life trials look as much like trials on TV as possible. Um, will you try the freedoms when they go on sale? I'm not sure. I can never remember. Dude, hey. I got the dog in the bathroom with me. Um, I can never remember which ones are the ones that I can run in the Freedoms or the Liberties. The names are so familiar. One is a, a, a stable, uh, a stability shoe, one it isn't. The other one, now that it's not ISO, looks a lot nicer. So I might give it a shot, maybe. Uh, what's my New Year's resolution? I'll have a whole bunch of them. Um, one of them, though, uh, isn't like running related at all. One of them is to make sure I'm uh, making priorities my priorities. So that's something I have to work on. Um, do I consume gels or bars while running or do you take a break? Uh, sometimes on a longer, harder run, I might bring some food with me. With low heart rate training, I find myself not needing to bring food as much or water. It's also, I've been doing it in the winter. So that during the winter time, I also drink and eat less. Um, I don't usually take a break. I try not to take breaks um, if I can help it. Um, a couple of marathon training blocks ago, I was taking lots of frequent breaks and I felt like a weakness that I had going into that marathon was that I didn't have a lot of experience at like 15, 17, 19 miles without stopping. So I try not to take breaks at all. Um, in case you missed it, please suggest a pacing strategy for my first half marathon. Uh, I think you should have an idea of like how fast you, you want to go or a goal pace uh, based on some of the runs that you've been doing. Uh, as far as pacing strategy, I would try to shoot for an even split. So kind of go for, think about where you want to be at in terms of your overall time. Figure out what the uh, miles or kilometers per minute that is. For the first half, run that pace or slower. And then kind of reevaluate where you are at the six or maybe the nine mile mark or like the 10 or 15 K mark. And then adjust up or down from there. And otherwise, have a lot of fun. It's going to be a fun, a half marathon is my favorite distance to race. Um, does your wife like your running hobby? Does she run? My wife doesn't run and she tolerates my hobby. I think that now that it's gone, I think it's hard to call what I'm doing now with running a hobby anymore. So I think she loved my running hobby. I'm, I think she tolerates what I'm doing with running now. I'm in a weird bubble place where it's taking a, about as much time as my job sometimes and it's not paying me nearly as much as my job. And so that's where it becomes a problem. Um, just because it takes away from other things. 
Uh, favorite running shoe of all time, Pegasus 33 Shield. I think a lot of that has to do with nostalgia though. That's the first sh shoe that I ran in all winter. It's the first time I ran year round. So nostalgia is the softest midsole cushion. How tall are you? I'm 5'10". What do you do to mentally train in addition to all your physical training? Well, this is from my friend Colin. I've known Colin for forever on YouTube. Um, he's We've been following each other since I had like 30 subscribers. Anyway, Colin, um, I don't do anything in addition to the mental training because sometimes just being out there, getting out there is the mental part. The running is a lot of times the easy part. It's getting to the running. It's uh, continuing the run. Uh, that is the hard part. And that's where the mental toughness comes in when the weather isn't great, when you're stressed and don't feel like you really want to run and you do it anyway. That's when I feel like you're developing a lot of mental toughness. The other thing is, when I do have a really weird running situation, like yesterday, like the other day, I was running in really thick fog and I had a head headlamp on and I felt like I was just in a bubble of murky white. I could hardly see around me, anything. Um, and I was just like, this is a really weird running situation or when it's like pouring rain or when it's really cold or super windy. I just feel like these are the times that I kind of put in my memory bank so that when it comes time to race, I remember, these conditions that I'm in now are nothing like what I've already done. I've already done the hardest parts. Now I just have to unlock that and remember that I've been through worse before and that helps me to push me forward. Do you still retire shoes after about 270 miles? I don't because I don't get to 270 miles in shoes anymore. I don't think in 2019 I got took any shoe to 270 miles, unfortunately. It used to be one of my favorite things. I think it's what kind of, not put me on the map, but I think that's that was my thing. When I started out on YouTube, I was like, lots of people are doing shoe reviews. People are getting shoes early, I'm not getting shoes early. People have access to lots of shoes, I don't have access to lots of shoes. What I do have is I'm putting a lot of miles in this shoe and no one's making a video about that. So that's where I went. I kind of went where no one's at. So that's why I did the 270 miles to 300 mile review. Unfortunately, I don't do that anymore because there's just so many shoes that I want to get to. So normally I get to about 100 miles in a shoe and then I retire it. What shoes am I most excited for in 2020? Right now, the Endorphin Pro, the plated shoe from uh, Saucony is probably the one that I'm most excited for. And then I'm probably going to try some of the Elite. I'm not sure even what the model names are from Skechers. I think I might try some of those this year. And then... I don't know if Alpha Edge comes out, if that ever actually makes it out uh, to the marketplace. I don't think it will, but if it does, I'd love to try that. Uh, what to do if you need to run in outdoors with strong winds? Run outdoors with strong winds. Uh, do you wish you were sponsored by Nike? No, because I think the problem with if I were sponsored by a shoe company, then I wouldn't be able to run in other brands' shoes. And that would make it hard for me to do what I do. And if I can't do what I do, then I'm not that useful on YouTube. Um, when you've used Martin, do you drink a bottle to preload beforehand or carry it? Thanks. I have, oh, it's from Run on Iowa. Awesome. Uh, I have done the, the, the pre-drink once before. I didn't really notice it helping all that much. So I just kind of do my normal pre-run or pre-race uh, hydration routine, uh, which is to drink some coffee when I wake up, eat my usual breakfast, um, and then drink a little bit of water to stay hydrated before the race and then eat the gels along the way. I'm, I've not dealt too much with uh, drinks in terms of before or during a race. I usually just drink what's on course. Uh, ever going to wear Nike again? I hope so. Uh, would you like to do more trail running and maybe ultra in the future? Absolutely. I, I've been finding that I'm absolutely loving trail running. The problem is that I don't live near trails and I detest commuting to exercise. And so there's really nice trails even here in Eastern Iowa. It's only a five mile drive to get there, but I don't like driving to get there. I'd rather just hop outside and just run three laps around here. Um, and the amount of time it takes me to get up, get the car, drive over there, drive back, that's like half a lap. I could have done around a couple of miles that I could have done. Uh, best running shoe for a three and a half hour marathon, uh, Nike Vaporfly 4% or next percent. Uh, how to improve running efficiency and how to keep proper running form during long runs? Do a lot of long runs. That's how you'll get better at your form. 
Uh, what pace did you run your easy runs when I first started? When I first started, I think I was running about 10 minute miles, like in 2010, that first marathon that I did in 442, I was running like 10 minute miles. I think I only did like 40 mile weeks as well. So I was, I went from couch to marathon. It wasn't pretty. It was about as pretty as couch to marathon usually goes. How do you build up your mental toughness in marathons for long runs? You build up your marathon's mental toughness through your training. It's the training that you do. It's the consistency that you're building. That's where your mental toughness comes from. Your mental toughness doesn't come from any one single day. It comes from all the days. That's where it comes from. How long did it take for to take you to get faster on running? Uh, once I started running year round, my paces really started picking up. So I guess a year. How many pairs of shoes you got? I don't know, I think I like 15 right now. Too many. What shoes are you going to use for your next marathon? How do you think it will compare to Vaporflies? Right now I'm leaning towards the Carbon X, maybe the Carbon Rocket, probably not because my feet aren't strong enough for it. Um, so those are like the two lead contenders because I still want a carbon plated shoes. I think the Carbon X is going to be great. I think I'm going to miss the Vaporfly next because I like the bounce and the cushion. But the Carbon X is really smooth, so I still think it's going to be pretty easy on my feet. That's my main concern, ease on my feet. When to consider to have a running coach? When you plateau or when you are, aren't sure what to do next. Uh, for how long you will ban Nike from your videos? They're not really banned, but uh, what I'm waiting for is the results of the investigation that they promised after the Mary Kane story came out. What I'm waiting for is to see some sort of change in at least announced direction from the new CEO when the new CEO takes over in January. I need something to show me that they're not just sweeping this under the rug and actually paying attention to some of the problems they got in-house right now. How should I start upping the miles after knee injury? Slowly. Uh, and, and in consultation with your physician. Um, do you think you'll stick with low heart rate app training after your next marathon? Yes. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. For Boston, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back at least in the first couple of weeks, which will be like right away, uh, legs, uh, weights in the gym, and also uh, some treadmill work with the incline just set to max because I don't have hills around here. So those are like the two things that I'll start off with. And I'll probably finish it off similarly to how I am now with lots of uh, just fast marathon paced miles. But that's, that's kind of loosely what I'm thinking so far. Uh, what did you think of Star Wars 9? I did, didn't see it yet. Um, yeah, I'll explain more in another video, but I didn't, I had a chance to see it this week. I didn't see it yet. If I had to pick one shoe to run, 47 miles, what would you pick? Probably Pegasus, Beacon, or Rincon. Uh, did you ever deal with mental burnout when it comes to training? Um, I'm kind of dealing with it now. I'll, I'll explain more later, but not really. Um, it's not the training that's coming that's hard, it's just balancing everything that's hard. How much weight did you lose with running over the past few years? Uh, I think most of the weight I lost, like that first year I started running year round, uh, I went from 180 to about 140. Um, I went from 180 to like 145, and then like the next year I went from like 145 to 40, and I think 140 is kind of like my fighting weight. That's kind of where I've been ever since. How's the Houston Marathon training going? Looking for good for sub three? I'm not going to shoot for sub three. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to shoot for yet. Houston Marathon training is going well. I just wish I had another month, um, but I don't. So um, we're going to show up to race day with whatever we got. Uh, Rincon, Nepali, or Crift Clifton. Um, I have not run in the Nepali before, um, but over Rincon and Clifton, I like the Rincon. Um, how do I store all my shoes? I have those like those plastic boxes that all the shoe tubers have that have the, the trap door in front and then you put the shoes in. I have those so I can stack them up real tall in my closet. Um, are you going to get back to San Diego? Hashtag non elite Kofuzi training. I would love to. I think the conference that my wife used to go to every year, I'm not sure if it's good. It's in San Diego anymore. So that's going to make it a little bit harder to go. So I don't know. I I'd need to go back out there because that's where Roadrunner Sports is. And I like working with those guys. So I'd like to go back out there. We'll see. I don't think there's a question on this one, but that's okay. And then which according to you is the best running shoe for beginners? A daily trainer. So like pick a brand, one that works for you and find the daily trainer in that brand. If it's Brooks, get the Ghost. If it's Nike, get the Pegasus. If it's Hoka, get the Clifton. If it's Saucony, I think Saucony's would be considered the Kinvara. No, that's kind of a faster day shoe. Maybe the Ride. 
Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Saucony's like daily trainer is. Um, if it's New Balance, get the Beacon. So just get a daily trainer, one that's really versatile, that can go for, do most of your runs, uh, at least at the beginning. Pies or cakes, and what specific type? Um, I like pies. I like pies because they're a little bit more savory. My favorite type of pie is just crumble because it's just stuff thrown into a, uh, a, a pie pan with a crust on it and then you just bake it and then that's pretty good. I like that. Um, how do we build up mental strength to, to long runs? How do you build up men the mental strength to long runs? Um, you build it up day by day. It comes through the consistency and the repetition. Uh, by doing it more often, you'll have lots of difficult conditions that you'll encounter. You'll be a little bit more dehydrated this day. You'll be a little bit more fatigued this day. You'll be more stressed out another day, but you'll get through it and you'll get it done. That's what builds that mental toughness. Top three things you are most looking forward to the most in 2020. Um, Boston, running Boston for the first time is something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, one of the, it doesn't say running. So let's see, Boston is still gonna be one of those top three things there. Um, I'll just keep it to running though. Um, then uh, running Chicago again, I think will be awesome. Um, and then I'm gonna try and do a special Ragnar event with my running buddy. That'll be a pretty awesome event as well. Any interest in testing non-standard brands such as Reebok? I've been waiting for the Reebok Float Ride Pro to go on sale for a long time. It doesn't ever seem to be going on sale or when it does, it's not in my size. So like, I don't know. At this point, I'm just waiting for the next versions or some of the 2020 of the regular float rides, not the pro versions, look promising. So that might be something I might try. How does your core workout look like? Love your vlog. Happy holidays from NL. Thanks. Um, I don't have a core workout. It's something that I probably need to work on, but I don't. I don't have one. Um, have you ever tasted noon hydration? If so, what are your thoughts on it? I love noon. I used to hate it. I used to think that uh, noon tasted like if you collected someone's sweat and put it in a glass and then added a little bit of Splenda, that's what noon would be. And I think chemically, I think that's kind of what it is um, in terms of you sweat, if you sweat out electrolytes. But it's a lot of electrolytes, it's low sugar, um, and a lot of them have caffeine in it, so I love the ones that have caffeine in it. Um, what ho Hoka shoes with grip, durability, and good for long runs do you recommend? Um, I like the Clifton 6. Um, I like the Bondi 6 for long runs. I also like the Rincon for long runs. In terms of grip though, when you mean grip, I don't think the Bondi is the most grippy of shoes. Maybe it's just because it has a really tall stack height. Uh, but I like the Rincon and Clifton. Um, then there's also a, a whole catalog of trail shoes that I'm not familiar with that you could also look to. Is Polar Vantage V your sport watch for 2019? Uh, it has been. I've been really liking the sleep tracking feature in terms of it keeps track of not only how long I slept, but the quality of my sleep. And that helps me tie it into like my heart rate that I'm looking at for my runs that day. It, it all starts to help tell a better, paint a better picture for me. Um, it's not really on the topic, but do you have TikTok? How do you like it? I think TikTok is funny. Um, it reminds me a lot of Vine. Uh, I don't have one. I'm not on the platform. Uh, will you be... We would be seeing any reviews of ultra shoes from you. I was looking to see if they, if I could find any of the Chicago Escalante racers that they had put out a couple of years ago. I haven't been able to find any. If I could have found those, I would have reviewed those. But otherwise, ultras, uh, I think that's, I need time to get there. Probably not in 2020, maybe, but I'm, I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not really on topic, but how do you grow your account? Um, something that I learned very early on is, uh, from a guy who is a family vlogger as, um, if you want to have fans, you have to be a fan. And so if you want to grow your account, you have to help other people grow their accounts. Community. It's that you have to build the community. Um, have you qualified for Boston or we tried to, or what was it like? How do I qualify? I'm 20 years old. Um, I have qualified for Boston. Um, it was amazing to do it. Um, I was able to get it on my first try, which was not something that I was expecting. Um, so it was much, uh, very much a surprise. Uh, at 20 years old, to qualify, you have to run a really fast time. I think you have to run under three hours at 20 years old to qualify for Boston. The younger you are, the faster you have to run. I'm 40, so I have to run three hours and 10 minutes. Um, I ran three hours and about two minutes for my qualifying time. How do you choose what shoe you will run in? How many miles do you run in a month? 
Right now I'm running about 80 miles a week. So uh, that's what, like uh, 320 uh, miles or so, um, a little bit over 10 miles a day. The way that I choose my shoe to run in, a lot of it is dictated by what shoes I'm kind of reviewing. Um, for me, that's not really relevant to most people out there, but I choose it by the type of run that I'm gonna have. Is it something where I'm looking to just get out there, get the legs moving? Then I might pick a max cushion shoe. Is it just like a regular running day? Then I might pick a daily trainer. Uh, or is it a fast day? So I might pick a fast day shoe, uh, something like the Rincon from Hoka or the Boston 8 from Adidas or uh, Pegasus Turbo from Nike, something like that. Um, so that's kind of how I pick. Hi, Kobuzi. Hi. Uh, what is your favorite rain jacket? Um, I don't really have a lot of favorite rain jackets. I have a, have a rain layer that I really like from Mizuno that I bought way back, but that's more of like a summer rain layer. It's super like paper thin and uh, it keeps a lot of that uh, rain off of you, um, unless it's a downpour, in which case then you're just gonna get soaked all the way through. But I, I, all rain layers kind of fail at some point because I'm out there so long. Um, what's the fastest pace you're capable of running at? Uh, I'm not sure what distance you mean, but um, I don't I think I ran a mile in like 550 over the summer at like an unofficial event. So somewhere around there, I'm not super fast. Um, Clifton 6 or New Balance 1080 V10. Um, I think for, as a daily trainer, the Clifton 6 is better. As a max cushion shoe, the 1080 V10 is better. But if I had to pick one of the two, hmm, it's really close. That's a tough question. Uh, I think my answer could change depending on the day. What has been your favorite fast shoe of 2019, excluding the next percent? Carbon Rocket. Nope, Adios 4. That's my favorite fast shoe. I just can't run in it for very long. Hey there, Kofuzi. Hey. I guess you've been running for a long time. How to keep your motivation for running? Uh, for me, what motivates me is um, like stats uh, and streaks and um, the gamification of uh, fitness. And so I love posting stuff to Strava. I love posting stuff to Instagram. I love interacting with people on YouTube. So those are the things that keep me motivated because I want to have good stories to tell you guys. I want to have good footage to show you guys, that kind of thing. So that's what helps keep me motivated is you guys. Um, all right. Being a dad and having work commitments, what is a sustainable weekly mileage for you? I think like 65 to 75 is a sustainable weekly mileage. 80 has been really hard on everybody. Um, is there a specific distance where if you cross that distance, you can run the distance at any time? Um, Oh, I think that like once you can run like a marathon, you can probably, I think the way they answer this question, if I understand it right, is like once you've trained for a marathon, you could pretty much, as long as you're running somewhat regularly, just like run a half marathon. Um, so I think that that's one way of answering the question, I think. Come to South Africa and run the Comrades Marathon. I don't think I have the legs for that, but I would love to do that sometime. I don't think it'll, I, I can't see it happening, it's, but you never know but it looks like it's absolutely beautiful. What's your CrossFit regime to keep in balance with all the running? I don't have one. Sometimes I did, I started out doing some leg work earlier on, but I, I kind of dropped it. I'll, I'll pick it back up soon, but I don't really do a lot of other stuff. I just run for now. Uh, a lot of your time seems to involve running, ending videos and maintain social media. It really does. Uh, how do you balance everything considering you have a family? I imagine this requires planning. It does require a lot of planning. It requires a lot of patience and understanding from my wife. It requires a lot of juggling. It requires a lot of un un unorthodoxy. Sometimes I wake up at like 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning if I know I have a lot to get done. Um, sometimes I run commute and I split up the run. I run to work and then later in the day I run home from work. So it's just splitting it up and trying to find a way to do it um, and keeping an eye on those priorities. It's easy to let them slip. Yo, what's going on?